Thank you, Father, for the hope that does not disappoint. Oh, you need an anchor, man. You need something to hold on to. We all do, don't we? Wow. So, um, I'm going to read a scripture verse. And I want to start in a funny place. Matthew 26, verse 45. Um, when he returned again to his disciples, he awoke them saying, Are you still sleeping and resting? Don't you know that the hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the authority of sinful men? And then he said in verse 46, Get up and let's go for the betrayer has arrived. So before I read the rest of this, I want you to know that Jesus knew what was coming. I know we know that. But in context of what I'm going to share today about praise and worship and betrayal, I want you to know firstly that Jesus knew we were going to betray him. Let's carry on. Verse 47. At that moment, Judas, the, the once trusted disciple, appeared along with a large crowd of men armed with swords and clubs. They had been sent to arrest Jesus by order of the ruling priest and Jewish re religious leaders. They always want to crucify us. The religious leaders will always want to crucify you. Now, Judas, the traitor, had arranged to give them a signal that would identify Jesus, for he had told them, Jesus is the one whom I will kiss. So grab him. Very interest, uh, important. Everybody say kiss. Kiss and grab him. All right, we're going to get back to that. Judas quickly stepped up to Jesus and said, Shalom, Rabbi. He keeps calling Jesus teacher. And his other disciples called him master. In any case, Shalom, Rabbi. And he kissed him on both cheeks. Now listen to Jesus' response. My beloved friend, Jesus said, <laughs> is this why you've come? All right. I want to share with you a couple of things quickly and, and, and it's going to, I want to just get down to it. Is that okay? Um, a couple of words that I would like to just focus on is the name Judas. The name Judas means praise. It means it comes from Yada, from Judah, Judah, Yada. Right, and it means to throw your hands in the air, um, to shoot your hands in the air like arrows, in surrender. All right, and it and 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 what it implies is that your hands represent your ability, your skill, your strength, your might. All right, so when you throw it in the air and surrender, you say that I will not oppose what's happening to me right now. All right. It's a word for praise that that's very um, controversial, really, because as men, we are taught that we need to fight to get victory. But here Jesus says you need to surrender. It is, I mean, if you grow up as a fighter, surrender is no option, right? You're not allowed to surrender. Surrendering is a bad thing. You're going in ministry, you get hurt, you're supposed to fight back. Fight to do what God called you to do. No, no. You're supposed to surrender. The power of praise is... <laughs> but this guy that represents praise, nonetheless, betrays Jesus. All right? With a kiss. Now in um, John 3, Jesus, or John 4... Jesus talks and he's talking to the woman at the well and Jesus introduces um, a word for, for worship, proskuneo. And proskuneo means to bow towards, to kiss, like a dog licking his master's hand. And that word kiss is, if you, you know, from Philadelphia, Philly area, you know it means phileo, right? It's the city of brotherly love and that's what it means, love. So the word for kiss and love is the same word. Kiss, love, right? And what it means is it means to attach yourself with affection to a dear friend. And that's what Jesus implies when we come to worship him. Now, worship has nothing to do with music. It has everything to do with how you 
attach yourself to the Father. Um, and how He attaches Himself to you. It's very intimate. It's very powerful. Um, now, praise has everything to do with music. You know, there's Tehila singing and, and there's Amar, you know, playing instruments and making a show of God with our instruments, with our singing. But in any case, let me get back to this. Judas, who represents praise, betrays Jesus with a kiss, a kiss of affection. And Jesus responds to him, saying, my beloved friend, because a kiss is what a beloved friend does. Now, I've got two men in this world that kiss me. I grew up in South Africa. My dad kissed me. My grandfathers kissed me. I kissed them as a man, you know, but after that, it got a little weird, right? And now I have two, two men who <laughs> I've grown close to. And we share life. We walk, we walk in life, you know, and, uh, and Tyler, Lee, and I, he would probably be watching. Um, he was with me last time. He's an awesome guy, you know. Um, sometimes we say bye, he'll just grab me and kiss me on the cheek. I'm like, okay, I love you too, bro. A little awkward, weird, right? So now a kiss could be a weird abstract thing. And then the second guy is Gib, Gib Doty, you know, Patricia's husband, love the man. He, we just connected so deeply in New Jersey. And I hope you guys are going to come to New Jersey to um, Revival Harvest. It's going to be awesome, guys. It's going to be awesome. We are going to, we're going to bring in the souls. And uh, I'm very excited to be there. And I'm obviously excited to see my friend Gib. He also kissed me. And I was like, yeah, weird, right? Now that word kiss, um, if you watch movies, you know, there's a boy and a girl that want to kiss and the music goes -da -da, until the and then there's fireworks and the, you know, everything builds up to that point. Why? What is so significant about two lips touching each other or two lips touching a cheek? It's what the word kiss implies. It implies to attach yourself to someone to attach yourself with affection to someone. So, attaching, two lips, attaching, you know? And it's just a moment, it doesn't have to be hours, it's just a moment. And um, what I'd like to share here is, Jesus was betrayed, and if the master was betrayed, we will be betrayed, be, be, be betrayed as well. <laughs> I've been betrayed. And you know what? The people that betray you is not, not people you don't know. It, 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 Jesus answered him correctly, my beloved friend. Those are the people that betray you. Those are the people that turn around and stick the knife in your back because they're close enough to do it. So what now? Hmm. I would like to heed a warning to the church and to all of us to not use praise and worship as a tool. We betray Jesus with our praise and with our worship. How? It's, it's actually way easier than you think. When there's no affection there. Let, let me start at the beginning. Judas betrayed Jesus for a couple of reasons. He was offended, all right? He had debt that he needed to pay. He needed help, right? Those were the two main reasons, right? And also because he didn't really know Jesus. <laughs> he called him teacher, while his other disciples called him master. What's the difference between a teacher and a master? Do you know? I'll tell you, because I'm, you're not going to tell me now, right? <laughs> Um, a teacher, oh, let me start like this, a master, if I have a master, that master is going to tell me, Louis, I need you to do this today. And I don't have a choice. I'll do it, right? If I have a teacher, the teacher is not going to tell me what to do today. 
the teacher is going to instruct me to make me better. <laughs> the line is very thin here. So that I can become a mom meant to be. Do you see the paradigm shift? Eleven of his disciples saw him as master. If you read the previous chapters up to this point, you'll see that. They called him master, which means just tell us what to do. We'll follow you. We'll do whatever you need to do. We are serving you. We are following you, right? That was their perspective of Jesus. Judas' perspective of Jesus was, Jesus, you need to give me and teach me so that I can become better. You are the teacher that's going to impart to me. So his reasons were not serving the master, his reasons were serving himself. And that's how we betray Jesus in our praise and in our worship. We come to worship because we need to feel better. We come to praise because we need to look good. How many times have we not, I mean, hey, I'm not talking just to you, I'm talking to myself. I'm always in front of the church when we need to praise and worship. Whether I'm on stage or not, I'm always in front. And a lot of the time, you can dance, you can sing loud because, you know, you want people to think you're awesome, right? You want people to think you're having a real encounter with God. You want people to think. And the moment you do that to serve yourself, it's betrayal. If you go look at the definitions of praise and worship, you'll see our opinions are not required. It is all about Him. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't feel good. <laughs> If you serve your master, he's going to feed you, right? But that's not the reason we do it. We love him so much. <sighs> How many times have we not judged the worship? You know? I get it a lot. A lot of people come to me and they, they say, Hey, worship was great today. Thank you, Louis, so much. And I get it and I say thank you. But really, it's a wrong mindset. Because the moment we start judging worship, we missed it, man. Because you've been looking to me and you've been trying to get something out of worship for yourself. That's not what worship means. Worship means to kiss him. And it doesn't mean you don't get something out of it. It just means that your focus is, man, thank you so much. I, I loved him today. I saw him smiling over me and I could attach myself to him with affection, like to a dear friend. And the first place in, in, the, in one of the first places in the Bible where worship is mentioned is Cain and Abel. And the moment they compared their worship, because that's what happens. We judge the worship and we compare this person to that person, this worship leader to that worship leader. Guys, it's not God, mate. it's not at all. Your worship is you. It's completely in your hands. Can you step into that space? You don't need a worship leader. All right. Worship leader is not something that's in the Bible. There's just an instigator. And then the people out of their own hearts and out of their own thankfulness sang a song unto God. And they, they poured out their love to the Father. That's what it should be. But the first time when Abel's offering got accepted and Cain's offering did not get accepted, Cain saw this party. He saw this picture and he compared the worship. And this is a typical thing that happens with worship leaders and with people in church. They compare the worship and then instead of Cain just doing, because that's what the Lord said, just do what your brother does and your worship will be accepted. He had to make himself feel better about his worship and kill his brother. <laughs> we do that so much. Church, we are so divided. It's, it's so wrong. It's so wrong. We compare our worship and if a brother or somebody else has an awesome, you know, time of worship, we have to like say, yeah, but you know, they're singing other people's songs. They don't sing their own songs. You have to get your little stab in there. And that's how we kill. We sow seeds of division. We sow, no wonder the church is so divided. Any case, let me get back to this. Jesus was betrayed. Now, Worship means to attach yourself with affection. And that's, that's why I said the church, I got the knife in my back. 
The church hug whole idea is uh, we come to the Father and when we when it's time to worship and honor him when we get times of praise and worship in church, there's a couple ways we can approach him. And one of the ways we do a lot is just like to get it out to get it out of the way, right? So we can hear the sermon and go home. That's betraying Jesus. It really is betraying him. He didn't die for us so we can feel better about ourselves. He didn't die for us so we can just tick off our little list for Sundays. He died for us so we can know him and walk with him and be affectionately, affectionately attached to him. Now, um, and I often use the illustration, I don't have anybody here now, but a church hug is, you know, you know that little side hug, you go to, hey, how are you doing? You know, you're just doing it to acknowledge them and then you carry on, but there's no real connection, right? Um, an awkward hug. An awkward hug is when you meet somebody for the first time, like, hey, you know, yeah, you know, there's no connection. You're just, again, doing it to get it out of the way. But a real hug. Have you seen how people hug each other? People who love each other, haven't seen each other for a while. You know, children coming back to their parents' house for Christmas. They grab them, they hold them. They hold them. Hmm. That's worship. It's not just a kiss. It's a hug. It's to attach yourself to that person with affection. And that's what I would like to encourage all of us to do. Don't just get it over with. Don't come like Judas and just <laughs> acknowledge Jesus and walk away. We betray Jesus with our praise and worship. It's not a happy thought. <laughs> I intend to stop doing that for one. I'm not perfect. But um, we should stop judging the worship of worship teams in different churches. It's, it's your place to worship. It's not your place to judge where their hearts are and where they, they are. All right. Let me carry on. I was, I was trying to do this quickly. So Judas wasn't the only one who, who betrayed Jesus. All, his, all of his disciples did. When, when they grabbed a hold of Jesus, which is attaching, you know, when, when Judas came, he kissed Jesus and immediately they grabbed a hold of Jesus. That grabbing a hold is attachment. Now, everybody else had a good connection with Jesus. And that's a new word I want to introduce now, connection. We want to connect with God. We want to connect with people. We want to connect, connect, connect. But that... There's a difference between connection and attachment. And that's where we should go in our worship and in our walk with God. We should, and I know a lot, a lot of us have already moved into that, but I want to bring this to you in this way this morning. Um, hmm. We seek a connection with God when we worship. We seek an encounter. We want to connect with him and feel good. That's betraying him. When we come to attach ourselves to him, even if we feel bad, even if we don't feel better, we still love him. The fruit of that is, I can't even start to explain to you. I'd like you to try it and see for yourself, you know. But when Jesus got arrested and they grabbed Jesus, all of his disciples ran away. Peter then followed it at a distance, right? And so they weren't there for him. Should they have been there for him? I don't know. I think they shouldn't have been there for him. They should have betrayed him so that Jesus could have overcome betrayal so that we don't have to walk with that root and with that knife in our backs for the rest of our lives. Because we came to attach ourselves to people and ministries and we got stabbed in the back. You, it's going to happen, guys. <laughs> it's going to happen because we are people. Don't attach yourself to me either. I'm going to disappoint you too. We're all going to do that. Because we, our focus in our heart is really to attach to him. And to take the eagles, the young eagles, and mature them. And send them to the sun. To be attached to the father. Now, this is a good idea. Look here. I've got Jesus on my arm. Let me show you guys here. Nice tattoo, right? Where is the camera? There we go. So this is attachment because I cannot remove this. 
Now, if I had a pen drawing on here and I could wipe it off, that's just connection. The pen connected to my skin and left a little mark, but it can be erased. But this cannot be erased. The only way to erase Jesus out of my arm is to cut off my arm or to peel off the skin. Attachment is, I can have a friend. I can have a friend and you know what? If a bank comes to repossess his furniture and his car, you know, I can feel bad for him and I can just try to be there for him. But really, it doesn't affect me. But... If the bank comes to repossess my wife's car and my wife's possessions, it kind of affects me, doesn't it? Because I'm attached to my wife. I'm just connected to a friend. Do you see the difference there? That's why the word for kiss in worship and means to attach and not to just connect. Not just to. It's to attach because there's an emotion and a heartfelt desire there's an affection a true deep affection connected behind the action all right let me move forward peter was a true witness he knew who jesus was he walked with jesus he was in the inner circle of jesus and when they brought all these accusations against jesus peter was standing there but he was silent his silence betrayed jesus he didn't share his testimony Ouch. I get these weird words about the church, prophetic words, and I'm like, I'm like nobody, right? Nobody knows me, doesn't matter. But I have to give them because I can't be silent. You know? I have to tell people who Jesus is. I can't be silent. Now, before you start feeling bad about yourself, not being a bad Christian, I would like you to search your heart for the motives and search your heart for something because praise and worship is it's a reactionary thing. God did something and the people praised him for it. What did you see? How do you know him? Because if you know him deeply and truly, the praise and the worship, the affection will flow out of your heart like nobody's business. It'll just be overwhelming. And we won't betray him. We won't go to church and just tick off things. We won't go to church and stand there and just sing a song. We will connect ourselves to the song. And with all of our being presented to him. Not just sing with the people. Not just sing with the band. I could care less how good or how bad the band is. Right? So now I want to get to this point. Good. Gave you an old teaching about praise and how we betray Jesus with our kiss, with our praise and our worship, right? And how we should search to attach ourselves with affection to him every time we worship, every time we praise with all of us, not waiting on a worship leader to say the right thing, not waiting on the band to play the right song. You do out of your heart. That's true worship. That's true praise, right? Um, let's move on. People have betrayed you, but if you follow Jesus, the betrayal is a necessary step that leads us to fulfill the prophecies. What happened after Jesus was betrayed? Go read the rest of that scripture. So, yeah, Jesus is betrayed in verse 49, you know, uh, where uh, Judas kisses Jesus. And then verse 56. But all of this fulfills the prophecies of the scriptures. A couple of verses later. And I want to bring you to this. You have been betrayed. I have been betrayed. We have knives in our back that we have gotten from beloved friends, from people that were really close to us. And this is a sign to you today. And this is the prophetic word of the Lord. It will lead you to your fulfillment. It will lead you and it's meant to lead you into your destiny to fulfill and to yield. <laughs> Guys, Jesus had to yield and just let them take him, let them crucify him. And he yielded so far, he, he died. He died. I dare to say, if you got betrayed, it's because you're still alive. So die. Die. And let him raise you with him. What did I write you? 
I read a bunch of stuff. A connection with God means nothing if it doesn't lead you to attaching yourself to Him. I mean, we can have great worship services and connect with Him and then walk away and leave Him there. We're not attached. See, I can't leave this tattoo anywhere. It's always there. That's attached. Which really means we are always worshipping. Right? You can deny a connection, but not an attachment. Peter did. He denied. No, I don't know this Jesus. No, I don't know. I'm not this guy. He denied the connection that he had with Jesus. Right? Um, you can't be silent when you're attached. <laughs> There's no way I can hide this. I'm so attached to Jesus. If you meet me, you're going to see this tattoo. I cannot hide it. I cannot be silent. Right? Jesus was attached to the cross. Ooh, ouch. So that we can be attached to him. <laughs> we are now attached to him and the cross and in eternity. All right. Jesus knew you would. He knew you would betray him, so get over it. All right? We all did. And I, I mean... Our traditions and our emotions we say no I don't feel like it today or you know that they sang foreign songs that I didn't know so I couldn't worship guys I'm sorry but it's BS all right it really is if you want to attach yourself to the father you attach yourself to him if you want to praise him you praise him those are excuses I heard this statement the other day he who makes excuses are seldom good for anything else. All right. So let's not be people who make excuses. We will praise him with all of our heart. And we will adore him with all of our heart every time. Right? So praise and true worship is a natural thing to those who are attached and not just seeking a connection. All right, Father. I thank you this morning that Jesus was betrayed. To set an example for us. He laid his life down to save those who betrayed him. Even, he, he, even when he knew in that moment he was betrayed. <laughs> he still called Judas a beloved friend. Show us how you are leading us through our betrayal. into true worship, true praise, true praise, true worship, powerful praise that will shake the nations and show the nations who you are <laughs> to lead us to our fulfillment and our destiny. I want to tell you, you've not been betrayed for no reason. And this is the word this morning. Here we go. <sighs> you have not been betrayed for no reason. All right. Jesus was betrayed and it led him to fulfill the words of God over his life to, to fulfill the prophecies. Without this betrayal, I don't know why, but Jesus had to go through it, so I suppose we're going to have to go through it. I want to encourage you. You've been betrayed. Acknowledge it, but don't attach yourself to it. Attach yourself to Jesus. And let him take you through this betrayal. You know what's the sad thing? Somewhere in your life, you're going to betray somebody else. <laughs> Somewhere in your life, you're going to be that person that hurt somebody else. So I want to encourage you. Let's move on and let's trust God in all these things. But let's step out. This morning, when I started off, the Lord showed me the young eagles and how they are getting out of the nest. And how you've been betrayed. You've been betrayed. You've been chained to the nest. The parent eagles never made the nest uncomfortable for you to leave. They, they made it comfortable for you to stay, in actual fact. But it's time for you to leave. It's time for you to get out of your nest, honor them, thank them, and whether they agree with you or not, 
spread your wings and set to the horizons, flying to the sun. Because the Father has new mountains, new territories for you to go take and to, to, to possess. All right. And this betrayal will not stop you. This betrayal will just assist to nail you to the cross so that you can die with Jesus and also raise with Jesus. So we can have new perspective from a heavenly realm. Yes, I thank you, Father, for that. I thank you, Father, for that. So come, we present our, our betrayal to you, Father God, and all these people that have betrayed us so severely. People, and I dare to say, our beloved friends. My love for them did not stop because they betrayed me. My love for them will remain. Because my love for them is your love for them. This morning I want to pray for those people. I want to pray for the betrayed ones. People who walk with the knives in their back. And I pray as you remove the pain, the memory will remain. <laughs> but let it propel us. Let it free us. Free us from how great and how awesome we think we are. Free us from our own abilities, our own strength. That we can come and just surrender. Jesus, have your way. Jesus, have your way. We follow you into the sun this morning. Do not seek to understand, says the Lord. The new wine and the new wineskin is very different. And you will see glory and you will see me shine on you and shine on the new wine and the new wine will carry weight with it see gold in the wine and it will fill my people and it will anchor them it will root them they will have hope you carry the new wine now spread your wings and bring it and don't let the bitterness of betrayal infect the wine and do not stab at the old wineskin either it's my wineskin <laughs> Lord help us we need to mature so much the church is my church and the old structure is my old structure don't stab at it love it, honor it, respect it but you walk away from it mm, it's time to do a new thing and you need to explore you need to explore new things you need to step out of your comfort zone. You need to yield to me more. You need to trust me more. It's impossible to please me without faith. And that's the only way this will be established is through faith. You will go where I send you and say what I command you, says the Lord. For you are a watchman on the wall. Mm, and the watchman is not just on the wall. The watchman is outside the wall. The watchman is outside on the hills. And if you see the enemy coming, you need to warn the people. Speak up. Speak up, young eagles. Let your voices be heard. Let your voices be heard. And, as, and I saw the young eagles and I hear them singing. And I'm hearing them speaking out this morning. And I see them speaking out in unison. The exact same word. Word for word. On various mountaintops. And the word of the Lord will shake the ground. It will shake and reverb in the nations. And the nations will fear and tremble. And they will see and know the Lord God. For they have heard the voice of the Lord. Open your mouth and speak, eagles. Stop being so silent. Stop being so silent. Stop being so silent. Stop being so silent. Release your sound. <sighs> Praise means to make a show of God. Even to the point of being clamorously foolish. To use your body to describe 
who he is. So that those hearing you, seeing you, can experience him, how he is. What will you say if you've seen nothing? Up to this point, my dear eagles, you've only been able to describe the older eagles that's been in front, that's right there with you, that's been before you, that's gone before you, because you've, your eyes have been on men, your eyes have been on the prophets and not on me. Turn your eyes into the sun right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, that we can shake off betrayal. I pray that you will help us, that we will, in our times of praise and true worship, that we will present ourselves with all our hearts, with all affection, attach ourselves to you boldly, that the world may see you and know you. Remove betrayal from us. Remove the church out from among us. Let us love you. Bring true intimacy back. Sure. You are the nameless and the faceless ones. No one knows who you are. But the Lord says in your secret place, I have planted my seed in you and you will bear fruit, fruit that will remain. You didn't choose me, I chose you. In this place of intimacy, I want... Oh, I desire this intimacy with you because you need a birth into this realm of the earth, heaven. There are things that you need to birth, my seed, my word inside of you. Receive my word and receive the affection and the emotion, the passion and the love that goes with it. Wow. Thank you, Father. 